When I reviewed Serial Cleaner back in 2016, I raved about its unique premise and morbid sense of humor. While it was far from the deepest stealth game on the block, the concept of cleaning up an active crime scene with the cops still investigating was original enough to keep me engaged. And with its gritty 1970s style and a bunch of bonus stages based off of famous movies, I spent most of that year telling people to buy it. In fact, I liked it so much that whenever somebody would ask me what recent game needs a sequel, Serial Cleaner was usually the first name that I thought of. Now, six years later, the crime scene fixers are back in the appropriately named Serial Cleaners. With a whole new look, new characters, and a new decade to clean up, this ambitious sequel should be everything that I've been waiting for, and more. And yet, I find myself a little disappointed. We're going to explore why in this review of Serial Cleaners. As the 20th century comes to a close, an aging crime scene fixer is facing a real problem. He's assembled a well-balanced team of shady characters who are all talented at cleaning up whatever the violent underworld can throw at them. In a perfect world, this highly skilled crew would be able to work together to make all their dreams come true. But the world, much like the next murder scene that we're asked to clean up, is messy, and things get complicated as the past comes back to haunt these professional fixers. When it comes to cleaning up a crime scene, things haven't changed all that much in the last six years. The jobs can usually be boiled down to three simple tasks. Clean up the blood, dispose of the bodies, and retrieve all of the evidence. This is made much harder by the presence of not only the police, but also a hotshot father-son investigation duo or just mulling around the crime scene looking for clues. It's your job to sneak around the stage, grabbing up the evidence and picking up the bodies, all without being caught by the fuzz. The big thing that sets serial cleaners apart from the original is the cast, which includes a group of low lives who have their own individual skills. For example, Letitia can vacuum up the blood like anybody else, but she's also able to climb up fences and vault over short obstacles, as well as push boxes and other objects out of the way. Viper, with a three, is a Korean hacker who uses her skills with the computer to toy around with the police officers. She'll hack into the network to create noisy diversions and turn off the always imposing surveillance cameras. And then there's Hal, who's basically just the tall, quiet wife napper from Fargo. No, seriously, he's literally introduced at a crime scene where he's tossing people into a wood chipper. He has the ability to chainsaw the bodies into tiny pieces and then use the limbs to knock out the police officers. He'll also be able to cut through parts of the level, creating shortcuts and hiding places that nobody else can get to. What's fun about the storytelling is how it's told completely out of order. We'll jump around the 1990s and even go back to the 1980s in an effort to better understand who these characters are and what brought them to this fateful New Year's Eve celebration. Each level will be geared around a different character, so you should expect a lot of computers to hack when you're playing Viper, and tables to slide over when it's a Letitia stage. The game is split up into five increasingly tense acts, with all four of the characters getting a level in each act. Now, the non-linear approach allows for a lot of unpredictable stages, and this game makes the most out of it. This is the kind of game where you'll go from cleaning up a bloody crime scene at the quick stop from Clerks, to disposing of a bunch of bodies at the local rock club, to throwing evidence overboard when you're working on a yacht. You never really know where you're going to go next, but one thing's for sure, the level is probably going to reference some sort of 1990s crime film. I've already mentioned the obvious nods to Fargo, but expect to see moments from Seven, Reservoir Dogs, and countless other films from that era. Fans of the original Serial Cleaner may remember that there were separate bonus stages where you cleaned up scenes from famous movies, such as Alien and Star Wars and the Rocky Horror Picture Show and more. Instead of giving us bonus stages based on movies in the sequel, the references are baked into the actual campaign missions. Don't get me wrong, I chuckled when I saw that I was cleaning up the quick stop, 
but I much preferred the way that they kept the two parts of the game separate in the original. It's also disappointing that we didn't get a new batch of stages directly lifted from 1990s movies. The developers decided to split the difference, but not in the direction I would have wanted. Beyond adding a few new characters and axing one of my favorite modes, the most obvious change to Serial Cleaners comes in the form of a facelift. This is a much different looking game, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. On one hand, the new isometric camera angle allows them to create far bigger and more elaborate stages than anything that we saw in the first game. No matter what character you're controlling, there's always a lot to interact with and plenty of ways to navigate around the larger stages. On the other hand, the new camera angle and art style robs the game of a lot of its personality. Due in large part to the levels that we're cleaning up and the movies that it's mimicking, this is a much darker game than the original, which I found to be a little off-putting. The original was bright, colorful, and cartoony. I loved how the minimalist look masked a much darker and scarier game underneath. There's no mask this time around. The new style is menacing right from the start, making it look almost identical to the gritty crime movies that it's referencing. Strictly from a technical perspective, these levels are certainly more detailed, but I prefer the look of the first game. Unfortunately, that also goes for the writing. I get the feeling that a lot of the writing is intended to be a takeoff of the 1990s cliches and a heavy dose of pop culture references. Yeah, a little of this goes a long way, and the game is a big fan of trapping you in lengthy conversations that probably sounded better on paper. Part of the problem is that I just didn't care that much for the central plot, which is a bit jumbled and convoluted, thanks to the way we choose the levels and skip around time. I will admit that it does all come together in a compelling way at the end. But oh, I wanted to turn off the game every single time the slang-obsessed Viper or Slow Talk and Hal opened their mouths. Insufferable. It also feels like the developers don't do enough with the four-person team. They set it up as if we're going to be swapping between characters in every level, with each cleaner bringing something new to the table. The thing is, there really isn't a whole lot of that in Serial Cleaners. There are a handful of stages where we're able to swap between two characters, which is at least a step in the right direction, but since every character is capable and you can solve the stages in a number of different ways, there's really not much of a point of bringing out your tag team partner. This feels like one of those gameplay ideas that sounded really good early on, but then the developers couldn't figure out a way to make it work in practice. I mean, seeing how annoying it is just dealing with two people, maybe we dodged a bullet by not having levels built around swapping between all four characters. Now, when I reviewed the original Serial Cleaner, my main complaint was the repetitive missions. I was hoping that they would mix things up beyond the three basic goals that you see in every stage. The sequel does make an effort of adding more variety, but it's still incredibly repetitive. No matter what, you're pretty much doing the same thing in every stage, just like the first. To be fair, some of the late game levels do break the mold. I wish they would have sprinkled some of that late game originality in throughout the rest of the game. I also wish the computer controlled police officers were a little bit more intelligent. This is, by far, the dumbest artificial intelligence that I've ever seen in a stealth game. When a cop sees you, don't worry, just move behind a car or a sculpture or something and they'll completely forget about you. They'll also forget about you after you run away from them. It's like they have the memory of that guy in Memento, which is not a 90s movie. And that assumes that they even react to your presence. There were a few times when I would be able to stand right in front of an investigator and they wouldn't see me. Yeah, like I said, the AI is the worst. Despite not quite living up to the original, there's no doubt that cleaning up an active crime scene is still a lot of fun. I like that the level designs are more elaborate and the four-player crew does add some much-needed variety. This game also has a fantastic soundtrack that helps to give each of the characters a different vibe. There's a lot to like and a lot to be disappointed about, which is precisely why Serial Cleaners is a solid stealth game, but a bad sequel.
After six years of waiting, the crime scene cleanup crew is back to take on a new city and a new decade. Serial Cleaners takes inspiration from some of the biggest and most iconic crime movies of the 1990s and adds a bunch of new faces to the team, with each sporting their own special moves and abilities. The levels are bigger and more elaborate thanks to the new art style, but much of the personality is missing from the sequel. This is a disappointing follow-up with forgettable stages, repetitive missions, and some of the worst computer AI that you're ever going to see in a stealth game. Sure, it's still fun disposing of bodies and vacuuming up the blood of an active crime scene, but Serial Cleaners pales in comparison to the much better first game. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What is the most disappointing sequel that you've ever played? From Double May Cry 2 to Act Razor 2, there are a lot of disappointing sequels out there. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back shortly with a review of that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles compilation. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.